We all know Max Kellerman, former ESPN host and sports media giant. He is a man who gives his take on any team, any player, any situation. Kellerman is a boxing historian, a student of the game, and one of the most trusted voices in the sport. Yet it was a faction of the sport that led to tragedy within the Kellerman family. That man on the far left is Sam Kellerman, Max's brother. As talented as Max was, Sam, some would say, was even more so. Some may recall this music video of a young Max Kellerman rapping. The short one minute YouTube clip has glimpses of his brother Sam in the background, who was even credited in the song's title as the group was known as, well, Max and Sam. To give an idea of just how talented Sam was, his teacher would say in part, 10,000 students and 34 years have passed since my first day as a teacher. And I cannot recall one student of this quality, intelligence, and talent. Sam is someone who our world should be proud to know as an example of what humans are all about. Sam was poetic, a writer, a producer, a gift. As arthritis plagued the Kellerman Zeta, they massaged his feet while watching the Yankees. These feet represented perseverance, a demand for a better life, and the escapability to go in the shadows of the night from anti-Semites wanting him killed in the 1920s. Zeta's mother, sister, brother-in-law, niece, and nephew would be kidnapped by the Nazis and taken to the Yevpateria ditch. They, along with thousands of other Jewish people, would be executed via machine gun. Zeta would make it to the U.S., iron shirts for pennies, and raise Max and Sam's father, Henry, a prominent psychoanalyst and author who joined the Jewish leftist movement, which likely influenced Max's logical takes on any subject, making him an insightful, passionate host for civil rights and paramount understanding on the intersection of sports and politics. Pound for pound is not about who's accomplished more, uh, uh, who's proven himself more, anything like that. Pound for pound is simply about who is the best fighter in the world right now. On the come up, these two bickered about everything, which led to Kellerman's launch of Max on Boxing on PBS. When Max went off to college, Sam followed in his footsteps, taking up the sweet science, going to boxing gyms, and forming a kinship in the Times Square Athletic Club with a man named James Butler. Via Sports Illustrated, Butler was a teen from the Harlem Projects, absent father, party-loving mom, who had served time for petty larceny. Kid, you should be boxing, said trainer Alexander Newbold. You got a lot of anger in you. They struck up an unlikely friendship. That music video Sam and Max shot, Butler appeared in it. You've likely heard this man's name before because, unfortunately, a moment Butler will be remembered for forever was his sucker punch of Richard Grant. He'd served time at Rikers. The Kellermans, meanwhile, saw their careers accelerate. It's around the horn, the show of competitive banter. Here's Max Kellerman. Welcome back. Before Tony Reale took the reins, Max hosted Around the Horn. In addition, he anchored ESPN's Friday Night Fights. Then, introducing IMAX. He took his talents to Fox Sports, hosting IMAX. As always, he looked out for Sam and brought him along to LA writing a column for Fox Sports. Meanwhile, the boxer got out of shape away from the ring. In prison, Butler gained some 70 pounds. He would be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. When he got out, he won two of four fights, but saw a relationship slip away with Hall of Fame trainer Buddy McGirt and his girlfriend. He packed such a punch, he was nicknamed the Harlem Hammer. With a fight upcoming in California, he called an ally, his lone friend, Sam Kellerman. Sam welcomed him with open arms because simply that was Sam Kellerman's character. The issue was Butler did not respect Sam's boundaries, nor did he devote himself to his craft as much as he could. The days would turn to weeks. Butler refused to take his medication. The relationship began to sour. After a night out with actress Claudia Salinas, she and Sam returned to his apartment and recalled the following exchange. It was testy, with Sam telling Butler he had to watch a game to write his column and the boxer refusing. It almost seemed as if he needed to know whether even Sam would push him away, she told Sports Illustrated. Max and Sam were tight, like really tight. So when the days passed and one did not hear from the other, a sense of worry came came over. That's when the Kellermans took action. Two members of the Kellerman family broke into Sam's apartment through a window. They discovered his body, per court records, covered by a bedspread. The gas stove remained on. The corpse was found on October 17th. Police concluded it had been there for five 
days, citing the autopsy report. The New York Times wrote, Sam was sitting in front of his desktop computer when he was struck from behind with a blunt object more than 30 times. The murder weapon is believed to be a bloody hammer found near Kellerman's body. Detectives found bloody clothes belonging to Butler in the bathroom. Los Angeles police would locate Butler because Sam's 1993 Cadillac had gone missing. It was found abandoned near UCLA, where Butler was receiving treatment. Butler would be charged and pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter and arson. He was sentenced to nearly 30 years in prison. Max would say of his sibling, Sam was life's protagonist. Imagine the smartest, most talented person you know in the world. Then imagine the person you love the most. That's the guy. That's my brother.